Hello, I'm going to get started here. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mackenzie Merriman, and I am honored to have been working with Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center for about three or four years now. Um, I worked with Letty, our executive director, to launch this Support for Artists micro grant program back in 2020. And it's been such an important and special part of our artist programming. So I'm excited to present a little information that might help you prepare your application for this year's Call for Artists. Some important things, you know, if you're only here with us for a minute, you know, some things that you will wanna know about this year's Call for Artists is that submissions are due on the 3rd of March, next Friday. So we have about a week to go and definitely let us know if you have questions or if you need any extra time over the weekend, maybe next weekend, we're pretty easy to work with as long as you reach out to us, but definitely try to get your submission to us by the end of the day on Friday the 3rd. And we love working with a wide range of artists. So it's open to artists of all disciplines. We work with visual artists, musicians, writers, theater artists, dancers. So whatever your creative practice is, we'd love to hear about it. And an important facet of this work is that we give priority to Latino, Black, Indigenous, people of color, creatives of color. So if you are a white artist, you're welcome to apply, but your program should definitely benefit the community that we serve and know that priority will be given to these artists of color. And I'll get into the timeline a little bit later in this slide deck, but projects must be completed by September 1st of this year. So keep that in mind as you are pitching an idea to us, something that you can reasonably complete within the year. So a couple requirements for the artists that apply to this call for artists. This is only available to people located in Cuyahoga County. So this program is funded by Cuyahoga Arts and Culture Support for Artists Granting Program. So the address that you live at has to be located in Cuyahoga County. If you are not in Cuyahoga County, Definitely join Unidos por el Arte, which is our artist initiative, and we'll keep you in touch with other opportunities that come up for artists that might be in different counties, but this specific grant is only for people located in Cuyahoga County. And speaking of Unidos, it's our artist initiative, a growing list of creatives, Latino, Latina, Latinx creatives of all disciplines. We even have makeup artists, models, photographers, community builders. So if you are Latino and you identify as a creative, please sign up for the initiative. We feature artists on our social media each week and we send monthly emails of any arts opportunities that we come across, jobs that are being listed. So, and then we also have like networking events and special resources only available to people that are on our list. So if you identify as one of these artists, you can scan that QR code there to join, or there's also more information on our website. If you Google, Julio de Burgos Cultural Arts Center, Unidos por el Arte, then you can find the page dedicated to that program. And another thing to consider is that these artist projects that we select cannot be supported by another support for artists program. So this funding goes to a number of different organizations in Cuyahoga County. And this year there's Assembly for the Arts, Karamu House, which is a theater on the east side, and they have a room in the house arts residency. And then spaces on the near west side has their urgent art fund. So if the project that you're proposing is already receiving funding from one of these three groups, then it's unfortunately not eligible for this Unidos grant. 
All right, so the timeline, like I mentioned earlier, submissions are due next Friday, the 3rd, and we'd love to get those in, you know, by the end of the day on Friday, the 3rd, so that we can review all of the submissions that have come in. We've got about 20 so far, and we'll be selecting 10 artists. And we hope to notify artists or at least touch base about like if we need a follow up meeting or if there are questions or information that we need to make a selection. We'll make contact with artists the week of the 13th of March. And then you have, you know, a decent number of months to work on your project. But like I mentioned earlier, we want the things that you promise to be delivered in your project to be submitted to us by or on September 1st. And this is so that we can be ready to present you and your work at our yearly Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. This year it will be on the 16th and we'll work with our selected artists to figure out the best way to present that work. So if it's, we've had photo series where we display the pieces that are taken in our gallery, or if you're a musician, there can be a stage dedicated to your work, or if you pre present a video, we can have a screening of the video. So don't feel like you need to know exactly how it will take shape at our Hispanic Heritage Month celebration, but just know that you will be required to be present and participate in that event so that we can share and promote you as one of our artists. And selected artists will also have two required check-ins with staff at the center between May and August, just to touch base about the progress of the project. We are very understanding that the creative process can change. And, you know, when we launched this program in 2020, all of our artists had to rework their projects, essentially. So we like to just have some regular conversation about where you're at, what you need, if things need to shift. We're very open to that. Um, but just know that we will be requiring a few check ins throughout your process, should you be one of the selected artists. Part of the application form asks for a budget. And we've had a lot of artists say that they don't necessarily know how to build a budget for their project. They've never been required to do that, or they might describe in a few words what they plan on spending. But what we do love to see in a proposal is some pretty clear description of how you plan to spend the $5,000 that'll be awarded to you. And something that we, require actually is that the artist set aside at least a thousand dollars of the grant to pay themselves for the work. So a lot of projects might propose to spend the five thousand on other people and other things and while we love that kind of community-minded approach our priority with this grant is to support the artist and have them pay themselves enough for the work that they're putting into the project. So this is just a sample that could be used for an artist of any discipline, honestly. So paying yourself at least that $1,000, maybe you have a program that calls on youth or other artists to participate. Maybe you present a poetry workshop or an arts class or something like that and you want to pay participants even like 50 100 dollars so that could be something you put on your budget if you're a muralist or you're producing a performance and you need someone to support you as an artist assistant include that kind of funding or um, expense in your sample budget We've had artists buy themselves new computers or cameras, so any equipment that you feel like you would want to use this funding to support your artistic practice, definitely include that in the budget. Maybe you're a zine maker or a poet or even just a, a screen printer and you want to be able to buy some supplies for printing, include that in the budget, any other supplies that you want to make sure that you have some money to spend on. And then even transportation, if it's gas or a transit card, things like that, that can help get you to the center or to the places that you need to be to do the work. We want to be able to support you as much as we can with the funding that we award you. And a couple notes about what Cuyahoga, uh, Cuyahoga Arts and Culture wants us to note is that the grant can't cover food or international travel. 
But something great is that we've been able to actually support some artists to visit Puerto Rico because it's not technically international travel. So there are some ways that we can work to maybe get you to Puerto Rico. Um, and so that could even fall under transportation, honestly. But um, if your budget isn't perfect, that won't automatically disqualify you. We select artists and then we set up a meeting to really go over the budget and maybe there are some resources that the center can bring to your project that can help free up funds for other things but if you have a general idea of how you want to spend the money uh, this is how we would love to see it presented and just a couple tips for a successful proposal things that we love to see when we're reviewing these projects so we would love to see how your project will benefit the people that Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center is dedicated to. It's a diverse community of Latino families and artists. So we've been in the community for over 30 years now. I don't know if you can see that, but it says my, <laughs> my storage is <laughs> full. Um, Northeast Ohio, Cuyahoga County, Cleveland has this rich and diverse community of Latino family members and artists. So I know, isn't it real? Just And I say, stop reminding me about this. And they're like, okay, I'll remind you in 20 minutes. Um, so show us how that will benefit these people. Maybe you are one of these community members. You can say, you know, I am a Cuban writer and I am one of these people that you are dedicated to serving or maybe it's an arts class or a dance class that promotes culture from um, a Latino background so include that in your proposal description and also help us see that you can complete this project by September 1st you know maybe you want to produce a full-scale musical that can be quite challenging within just a few months so maybe if you have a huge project find a facet of it that you can reasonably accomplish with the five thousand dollars and getting it done by september um provide work examples that help us envision what your completed project will look like we have artists that do a lot of different things so if you have to choose a handful of work samples use things that are super relevant to what you're showing us. So if you're presenting a zine, show us some of your writing or your illustrations, or if you are a musician, show us a couple songs, or if you're a writer, give us some writing samples. Uh, that would definitely help us see exactly how your projects can come to life. And then, like I mentioned with the equipment and stuff, highlight how receiving this grant will further your artistic career. We want to feel like making these awards are going to help the artists level up their career. That's a big goal of the Unidos initiative as a whole is empowering Latino artists in our region to become the greatest that they can be. All right, so those were the main points that I had to go over today. This presentation will be posted on social media later this week. If you want to scan that QR code, it will take you directly to the form where you can fill out the questions. It's a pretty simple, straightforward form. But if you have any questions that you think of after the fact, definitely contact us, info at juliadeburgos.org. And then feel free to visit our website, juliadeburgos.org. On our blog, we have a recent blog post that goes over a lot of the requirements, and you can just reference that if you need help finding a link.